The Kamikaze Corps, the Japanese pilots who rode the divine wind to certain suicide. Kamikaze pilots have long been depicted as crazed suicide bombers from World War II. But for many former Japanese pilots and their families, their memories offer a different portrait of patriotism, selflessness, and necessity. It was a self-sacrifice for all. That's what I told myself because that was the only reason it made any sense. In 1945, Hisashi Tezuka was chosen to be a kamikaze. By the time I joined the military, I knew that Japan would lose the war if it were prolonged. On top of that, after receiving the highest level of education, even more so, I did not want to die. I gave up because we were not given a choice and had to follow the orders. As the 23-year-old was preparing for his trip, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's surrender. Although Tezuka never carried out the planned attack, at 93, he is still haunted by what he thought would be his fate. Yoshiomi Yanai survived his suicide mission because he could not locate his target, a rare mistake for a kamikaze operation. The 93-year-old keeps what he thought would be his last message to his parents in an album, along with photos from the time. With this album, I wanted to show that I was enjoying my life in the Navy, and to make a kamikaze dive was a proof of a man's true worth, and that I have no regrets. I didn't write a single word on how rough it was. It was, in fact, rough for me. After losing his best friend on his mission, Yanai felt it was the right thing to do to visit the man's family. His mother put her hand on my shoulder and said, it's a good thing you came back alive. After hearing this from her, it has become extremely agonizing for me to meet the bereaved families. For her, she had lost her son, and I came back alive. At 93, Yanai says it is his duty until the day he dies to tell the stories of his fellow kamikaze. Krista Fourier, Associated Press.